with all the big calls on all the big races. Yes, it's time for another Water Shout, your flagship feature weekend show here at the Racing Post, brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you again in the seat. Filmed somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. It's fair to say that the quality domestically is a little bit low. It's typical of this weekend, but we've got the great St. Wilfred. We've got some good racing at Newmarket and, of course, Newbury to preview for you. And don't worry, a Sunday sizzler to prop up the classy action coming your way. What a panel I've got. Before I do that, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. You can get your comments in below. We love to read those. Keep your feedback coming. Anything on Facebook, of course, let us know you're out there. And Twitter, hashtag what a shout. Let's get into the action then. Big guest coming up, but only after I reintroduce Paul Keeley to the scene. How are we, man? Yeah, all good. I'm not built for this weather, though. So I'm, I'm glad to be coming into the office. You're nice air conditioning. finally having a moan about it. Nice. You've been frying on the golf course or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you really enjoyed it. Oh, I love going out and playing it's golf. I love going out and now. playing golf, but, you know, not in that heat. Yeah, right, it's huh? getting a bit much, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, um, lots being said, of course, about, uh, the, you know, oh, there's not a lot of good news out there, is there? That's for sure. Before we bring in uh, Pat Cooney, you came into the office to me today and said, oh, it's that weekend, isn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, as we said last week, I normally have these two weeks off. Uh, you know, between Goodwood and Seagulls done. Between you. Goodwood and New York, Seagulls done it. We can't be off the same time together. He's got two young kids, so I mean, I can go on holiday out of season anyway. But, but yeah, it's just you know, you you're not going to get great racing every single week, are you? Especially when you're you sandwiched between two festivals. That's uh, it. You know, so you know, it is what it is. There is actually a very very good running of the Hungers, Hungerford Stakes. Uh, you know, arguably, you know, this is probably the second most competitive race on ITV on Saturday. Uh, and the Great St Wilfred's okay, despite the fact that it hasn't filled and we didn't even get a consolation race. We'll get is, to that, Kills. Yeah. We'll get to that. Let's bring him in then, our man from Stoke. Now, Pat, you're at home, okay, for this weekend, readying yourself, of course, for Tuesday, when we will be previewing all of your, like we did viewers with Royal Ascot, and guess who's coming back? It's only Oshin. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And talking of the weather, I do see showers are forecast at York on Wednesday, Thursday, so... That's going to help, and it's only going to be 20-odd degrees. So, yeah, so we're all feeling a bit in the heat, but uh, just keep an eye on those showers forecast. Yeah, no three layers on for our man in Stoke this weekend. Even the <laughs> heat wave is getting up there. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it on the rain. Now, why on earth are we missing an ITV race on Saturday? What's this all about for anyone that doesn't know? Well, yeah, obviously you, you have these big sprint handicaps, a bit like the Stewards Cup. Uh, there's a Stewards Cup consolation race. There's a consolation race for the Great St Wilford as well. Last year we had the maximum 20 in the Great St Wilford and the maximum 20 in the consolation race. And this year we've only got 15 in the Great St Wilford. Only two horses uh, were actually entered uh, for the consolation race, but they both got in anyway into the main one. So they've had to scrap it. No runners. Hmm. Pat, let's come to you then. Uh, of course, on Thursday, we're all waiting for the draw to come out uh, for the Great St Wilfred. That's down to 15 from 20, as Kill says, and they've not even got the consolation race. No, absolutely. But I think this is really the beginning of the end for these uh, consolation races. You know, we sponsored uh, the Bunbury Cup that I have done for the last few or four years. And that, that, that we had a, uh, the consolation race there, and there were only seven runners in it a few years ago. And Richard Fahey had the first and second. And I said to him, when did you enter your two there? And he said, we looked up with five minutes to go. There was only five entered. So I put my two in it, finished first and second. And we had the same thing at the Cambridgeshire meeting, which we sponsored. And there was a, a consolation race there. You think, well, there'll be plenty of runners in that. That was only a, a nine runner field or something. So I think it's the beginning of the end for it. It's a little bit different with the Air Gold Cup and the Silver Cup, because I think they're all up there anyway. So they might as well run. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's worrying times for sure. Slight difference on the prize value there as well. So when do we hit the panic button? Because, of course, look, look, we have got a bit of a what some people are calling a drought. When was the last you know, drop of rain you saw? And we've got things like the Racing League that are maybe offering decent prizes on the Thursday. Yeah, I mean, I think Racing League's obviously taking some, some runners out of it. But, I mean, obviously, we have got a smaller pool of horses than the most races that, you know, that have ever been run in Britain, haven't we? And it, you yeah. know, it doesn't work, sim sim simple as that. But yeah, I mean, if, if horses, if owners aren't being attracted to the game and people are selling better horses out, then you are not going to have the required numbers for, for some of the better races. And yeah. It's as simple as that, really. All right. The great St Wilfred, of course, 250 at Ripon on Saturday. We'll be giving you a big race preview amongst many this weekend. Let's see what exactly we've got coming up. 
Well, I've got the Saturday Sizzler on the panel, Paul Keeley. I go to the sizzling saddle. Red hot Andrea Axini joins us, uh, hot footing it on his way to Newbury. Great interview for you there. Must not miss some news on Stradivarius. We've got five big race previews, including the Jacques Lamar, our Group 1 action at Derville in France on Sunday. What a race that could be. And don't worry, we'll be giving you those all-important weekend winners. Very pleased to say, got one of the hottest jockeys riding anywhere at the moment on the planet. Andrea Atzini joins us. Now, this is Friday morning. Andrea is hot-footing it to Newbury as we speak. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we're just on the way to uh, Newbury as we speak and um, yeah, hoping for a good day. Yeah, you could have a good day, of course. Um, so t t t uh, some interesting two-year-olds there. We'll get to your weekend runners, if you don't mind, Andrea. Now, I I've got to be honest, Andrea. Dave Orton from the Racing Post, who does this show, yours truly, is a big fan of yours. Or I was until the Euros final last year, when Leanne Franco de Tori's Twitter went absolutely viral with you and him mocking us over, over a penalties victory. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was a good day for us anyway. It's... Uh... Well, actually, when I went with Frankie, I went to the semi-final uh, with him. And uh, when Italy played Spain, that's when I was with Frankie. And when I went, when I went to watch the actual final, uh, Frankie wasn't with her. So, yeah, I was there for the semi-final and the final as well. Yes, indeed. Well, it, I've been to Italy twice this year, and it's fair to say it keeps getting rammed down my throat, that. Uh, th the year is going well, Andrea. I'm going to throw some stats at you, if you don't mind. Now, viewers, if, you, if, if you're not aware, we get these stats, and there's a graphic coming up on the screen in a sec for, uh, for our viewers, and Andrea, of your best horses by Racing Post rating. Some will be surprised that Stradivarius is only joint fifth on that list. More about the great Strad a little bit later on, but Postponed sits on top of that, the King George winner. Four of your 29 Group 1s came on that chap. Um, yeah, well, actually, I did know I wrote 20, 29 Group 1 winners. Um, he, uh, yeah, he was obviously the best horse I'd say I've, I've, I've ridden uh, in my career. Um, I'd be lucky to ride, you know, quite a few good horses, but I'd say he was not just an official rating, just you know, as a horse himself, he was, I would say, he was the best horse uh, that I've ever sat in my life, yeah. I've got a story about that day uh, when you won uh, the King George. My son was born that day. It was in 2015. It was on the 25th of 2015 in July, I remember. And he was about two weeks late. And I was all over a horse uh, of John Gosden's. I think it was called Eagle Top, something like that. And, of course, I should, have, I should have whacked that being called postponed. So ever since I followed his career... Of course, it's not just him at the top. You've got Lamato there, of course, Henry Candy. But Kingston Hill was another one of your bosses, Roger Varians. Two classics, of course, both coming in the St. Ledger. Yeah, no, Kingston Hill, he was the horse that sort of put me on the map, really. Um, it, it, it came at the uh, sort of perfect time of my career when things were start picking it up, picking up for me. And uh, it's the sort of horse I've always said, as, as a young jockey, it's the sort of horse that uh, everyone needs. At, uh, at at some stage of your career, and I was very lucky to, to find him in my early twenties. And uh, you know, it was, it was, like I said, it, it was a horse that sort of put me on the biggest stage, uh, gave me my first English Group One winner when he won the Racing Post Trophy, and it gave me my first Classic winner when he when he won the Ledger. Um, it gave me a great spin in the Derby when he was second by in Australia. But he, he's a horse I'll never forget, and uh, he's a horse that obviously meant a lot to me, and is the horse that, that helped my career a lot. We don't always go down memory lane uh, with our jocks, but this one was worth it. And the guys that run uh, Race on Interactive, as I mentioned earlier, went, he's won a lot in capital letters. I can tell you, Andre, that as of the 10th of August this week, when you rode your most recent winner, that was your 1,183 you're on now, uh, domestic winners. 199 for your retainership, um, Sheikh Mohammed um, Obeyed Al Maktoum. Where is that... 200th going to come from? Is it going to be today at Newbury by any chance? Uh, let's hope so. I actually, I knew, I knew it was getting close to 200, uh, but I wasn't. I didn't know it was on 199 winners with, with obviously the boss, Shaq Mohammed obeyed, and uh, well, it, hopefully there's a, there's a good chance we might get it out of the way after the first race. Yeah, yeah, she looks like a bit of an interesting one. She'll be very well backed. Is you now? Just do me a favour, Andrea. When you go past the post and you get that two hundredth, we're always saying here in the studio we want to see jockeys doing proper celebrations. Give it a little whip wave, will you? <laughs> I 
I can't. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a big enough race to do that. <laughs> we'll know, though. We'll know. All right, let's move on a little bit, shall we? Uh, it's going really, really well this season. Uh, a nod to York quickly before we look at your actual runners uh, tomorrow, Andrea. Of course, you got back on Stradivarius in the Goodwood Cup. Loads of uh, spoken about that. But, of course, some of our sort of new viewers into racing won't know that you helped start his career, the Queen's Vars, etc. of course. How good was it to get back on the old boy? You know, I had a uh, very good relationship with the horse in his younger days, um, winning the Queen's Vars on him as a, as a three-year-old and his first Good World Cup. And then and obviously I got back on him as, as a four-year-old as, as Frankie was suspended, so I won two Good World Cups on him. And uh, obviously I got a phone call um, a few weeks back uh, it was a week before the, the Goodwood Cup, saying that uh, I was going to get back on him. And uh, yeah, it was, I was, it was amazing to get back on the horse. It just the atmosphere was second to none. And the, the people that behind him, it, it's just amazing. You know, from when you get on him, when you can't down to the start. And I know he got beat, but, you know, the, the, you know, the, the people, the reception he got when he came back into the witness enclosure, although, like I said, didn't mean it was second, it, it, it was great. It is a horse of a lifetime. Uh, absolutely. Andre, obviously, with these yeah, clashes yeah. in short supply at the moment, I th I'm sure you'll look back at that Goodwood Cup, you know, a couple of weeks ago as being one of the races for the ages, and that's a real feather in your cap, man. Yeah, um, obviously, you know, as a jockey, obviously, I was, I was very glad that the horse got beat, you know, he tried his heart out, and, uh, and you know, if, 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 I, if the race would have went out, went differently, I don't know, maybe... The results by the change, maybe not, but anyways, it, it, it does. It's, it's 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 one of those things that um, you know have the race. You know, uh, you know the win is very good. I can't take anything away from him. I think he's a, you know he's a young kid on the block and he's going to be very very good. But uh, I don't. I wouldn't mind giving another go uh, at him and um, and see how he goes. But yeah, no, I, I tell you, as 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 uh, watching the race. Um, you know, as a public point of view, I'd tell you, would, you know, it would have been a great race to watch. Oh, it absolutely was that. You know, it's it's kind of helped this flat season when it badly needed it, I think, and Goodwood are absolutely thrilled about it. Now, Andrea, let's turn our attention to York next week. A lot of people saying you're keeping the ride on Stradivarius, who again, will he win the uh, the Lonsdale Cup again? Will he bow out there, of course, uh, during Ebor week? But you're still to actually get the call. Um, I, I sat on, on, on Stradivarius... Uh, Yesterday morning, um, the horse seems in, in good form, and you know he's uh, he's done a nice bit of work. And uh, but I, I actually don't really know what exactly what the plan is. Um, you know, I just sat to him yesterday. I was happy with the horse, and sort of left it like that. So I actually don't know what he's he's actually definitely going to York. I haven't spoken to, uh, to John Goldston or, or Bill Nielsen yet. Whether he's actually definitely going, but one thing I can say, I did sit on him yesterday. Well, that we'll take that, and I think just good, you know to clear up a few bits because a lot of people tweeting this and tweeting that. So that's where we are, viewers. Basically, that's what you get when you watch this. On what a shout! Right, let's. This is what they are waiting for, Andrea. Look at your rides tomorrow. You've got a couple rides for the Johnsons in the one twenty. Uh, a handicap you ride Highland Premier wasn't seen at best effect at Goodwood last time. That can happen, of course, during a hot week there. On some of his earlier form, you might fancy giving it a good go. Yeah, like you said, he, he didn't really turn out at uh, good of the last day, but his, his Newcastle ran beforehand when he finished second. I, I thought that was a, that was a solid run, and uh, it's a competitive handicap. Uh, it will go on the ground, and uh, yeah, listen, it's it's it, it, it be there with every chance. I think Pegasus look, looks looks the one to beat, but I think it looks very open, very open race. Yeah, OK, let's go then to the 155. The Denford Stakes over seven furlongs. The Victory Dance will be a bit of a hot pot here for Godolphin. That means perhaps a bit of pressure off on Ferrari Queen, the brilliantly named Ferrari Queen, who actually, there's a couple of nice links in this Denford Stakes, Andrea, because as you probably know, you've won it twice. You also rode her sire as well. She's two from two viewers, basically. She's looked certainly pattern class. She's by a horse called Decorated Knight, who we saw on that graphics. And you won this a couple of years ago, of course, on Ballardo. That's right. Yeah, I won the race in Ballada before, ended up winning the uh, obvious one the Euros afterwards. But yeah, she, she she's a nice filly, right? When she she obviously I didn't ride her at uh, Doncaster when she won first time out. She was very impressive that day, and then she ran out at, at that Kempton, 
uh, over seven furlongs. And uh, yeah, she won the penalty, which is it's never easy. And uh, I do think the track was riding quite slow, uh, which I'm not sure really suited. And she sort of had to do the donkey work, you know, making them running. And uh, that sort of sort of let her, let her use her experience. Uh, she's two from two. I, I don't you know how good she is. I think uh, I think she's nice. I'm, I'm sure she'll like the fast ground. She's by decorated at night, and uh, but like you said, obviously Charlie Appleby's always big victory dance. He, he's got he's got a form, you know. He only just got beat in the superlative at Newmarket, and uh, he brings good form into the race. And uh, Mike Freely just one of those fillies that you he, he wouldn't know how good she is, but one thing for sure, she tries, and I do think she's going to get better with racing as you know, she goes past ground. That's your second ride for the Johnsons. Then that victory dance, Andre. He's, he's on both his runs so far. He's hit a flat spot and run green. So bear that in mind. About two furlongs out, when you've got it in your head, where is he? Now we had Hayley yeah. Turner on last week uh, uh, during the Shergar Cup, and we told her how to ride Manacan. Never mind John Ryan and connections. It was me and Kills that told her how to ride that. It's my turn to do it this week with you on a horse called Universal Order, who goes in the Jeffrey Freer Stakes. This guy is sitting on another. Another big one, Andrea. All you got to do, sit, sit, sit. Wait, wait, wait. Pounce. Jobs your uncle. <laughs> yeah, it sounds easy. Um, at least there's only, there's only, there's only, there's only five runners in the race, and it looks like there's going to be a bit of pace in the race. But for some reason, he, he was very, very well beaten the last day at the, uh, at Newmarket. But uh, there again, he's, he's a five runners. It, it's a very tight race. I don't think there's much in between all of them. Really, I think everything has got a chance. Um, uh, in the race, you know, I think probably you know Freddie Amati needs or on, on his Ascot form, uh, he might be the one to beat. But uh, like I said, he is uh, he is a competitive race, and my fellow, if he turns up, um, he had a good chance. Yeah, he is a very talented horse in all seriousness, Andre. And on that contact ha uh, handicap form, he was a massive eye catcher that day. It's all about him being in one piece. All the best with that one. Your final race of the day is perhaps your biggest ride uh, for your, of course, a retainership and your boss, Roger Varian. Very interesting horse, this, who, of course, has, has won at Newbury as a two year old. Look, the business that day when he beat a horse called Gaius, who is now a very good handicapper, is Dubai Poet, who was third in the Jersey Stakes. Yeah, no, Dubai Poet is he's been in good form. Um, like you said, he, he, his run in New Jersey I thought was a very good run. Um, when he finished third and you know, horses I think the horse that German horse that finished behind him, he ended up going winning the Goodwood afterwards. So the, the, the form is there. Um, he's won a at Newbury before. It's, you know, it's a nice flat track which really sent there again, it is a competitive race. I thought for, for, you know, for a group two it's you know, you got the old, you know, Pogo is a solid horse, Chint, you know, good is, and Happy Romans. It, it, it is a very competitive race. So I just hope he runs well. Typical Italian stallion putting some effects for us on that clip. There, that's it. It was like you're in the nightclub all of a sudden. Uh, listen, let's hope you're. I'm on the way to Newbury. Yeah, well, yeah. Listen, that Saturday night when you've won all these big races, Andre. It's been great to have you on. Thanks to your great friend Oshin Murphy, who's been spending a bit of time in this studio. He helped uh, get us on. Uh, uh, Andre, good luck next week at York. Uh, we know yep. it's going to be a big one, but some business to take care of tomorrow. Now, you're on 99 for Marco Botti, I've since been told. So when you get the next one for him, right. little whip going past the post. And that next Shaker Bade winner, I want to see the celebration, man. Let's hope we get it out of the way today, then. That's Andrea Atzini, the hottest jockey riding anywhere. Where will that 30th Group 1 winner come from? You get the feeling it's not far off. Well, I think you got the gist of that. And uh, it's well worth it, of course, Kills, because he's, I mean, he's 33% strike rate in the last... Uh, two weeks, fifteen percent strike rate overall since he started riding. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's obviously one. Of, he's one of the top jockeys around, isn't he? I mean, Ashim Murphy that, that we had on RP Live on Saturday. He was, you know, he was telling us how good he thought he was. Like, you know, and he'll definitely have a winner, and he did have a winner. Yeah. Like, you know, so uh, yeah. I mean, you know, he's top class. He, you know, he had that spell where he won the the old racing post trophy now for Temperature about four years on the spin, didn't he? Like, you know what I mean? He rides, he rides these straight courses really, really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, sure to be booting home a lot more winners, isn't he? Yeah, including on Saturday, and it might happen in the 150, uh, the Jeffrey Freer stakes. Right, let's go to you, Pat, before we see what Kills thinks is going to win. Who has the market at this stage? Uh, well, the only three-year-old in the race, Zechariah, is our favourite as things stand at the moment, and has been a popular order since the, the final decks come out. We were 7-4 to four 
trim to six to four. Same connections, uh, the, the Mead stable that they won this a few years ago with Technician, who was a three year old, and, and that won well. So you'd imagine he's been aimed at the race. Perhaps a bit disappointing last time, but um, he ran at Ascot well before that. But I, I think this is the sort of race that away he goes might go well in the race. He's one of those horses that's hard to place, but his form overall reads just about the best, so he might be my preference. Tricky Trappy, or do we like one? Uh, well, I, it's funny enough, there, Rebels Romance was in this race, Anti Post, and was a very short price favourite, and I didn't get sort of bookmakers on the hop because they didn't know that he was entered in Germany. And, yeah. um, nor did I, but I managed to put up a way he goes in the weekend of at 10s, and... You know, I think he probably should be favourite now. I think Zechariah is favourite because he's a three-year-old and the others are more exposed horses, but I don't think his form is all that. And I think away we go, away he goes um, really shaped really well in the Goodwood Cup last time. I mean, that was a red-hot renewal. He had been second in the race the, the previous year to Truchan on soft ground. Yeah. But he travelled he travelled really, really well throughout that race. It was his only, only his second round of the season. Uh, I wonder whether they're saving for the e-ball because he ran in that last. He ran in that last year, but they're coming here, uh, and you know he's got some quality form to his name uh, overall. And like I said, he travelled really well for a long way in, that, in, in what was a really good Goodwood Cup, and he should be bang on this time. He's been something of a flag bearer, hasn't he, um, for the yard? Of course, Ishmael Omar Hamid. He travelled all around the place. You, you do look at a horse like him and think, well, mm. this is when they get away from the big dances, this is where they should mm. go and get their head yeah. in front. Yeah, my one fear in my one fear in the race is Holly Doyle, because she might she could steal it on Outbox. She's stolen a race or two on that horse before. Yeah. He uh, ran so badly in America that yeah. I looked at him, I hovered That's what that's what worried me. But you've got other horses coming back that need you know, to prove that they're still up to it. Zechariah, if you go back to that Queen's Vars, well, I'm not sure how good the Queen's Vars was still, really. No, no, It's up and down. Oh, right. uh, and he needs to bounce back. He definitely wasn't his best at the Bahrain Trophy. Horses can go from that to the Bahrain Trophy and just not fire, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's a bit of a graveyard, that, uh, for form horses. You've got Universal Order in there as well. And I, I, I've got to stick with this guy because it was too bad to be true behind the aforementioned Rebel Romance. Um, at Newmarket last time, just too bad to be true. If he'd have run third or fourth, I'd have gone, okay, that's we know how good he is now. It was just too bad. And I think Dave Simcock will have him back where he wants him. Andrea seemed to think that he'd just ride him for luck. If it goes his way, he's more than capable of taking this out, and he's just one of my horses. But this is a bit of a trappy one. Let's go to something more competitive. Yes, they're five down on the 20 strong field, but the 250, the great St. Wilfred, Pat Cooney, looks sure to be one of the day's strongest betting heats. Absolutely, yeah, and we uh, we won't get too many clues regarding the draw, but historically, you always needed a high number. That being said, that was when they were 20 runner races. You look at the first four home last year, there were 20 runners. They were six, uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20, and just another bottle won it that day. And I watched that race again this morning. He won it so easily, but that was Blinker's first time. But then again, he is three from three at the track. I don't know. This is a tricky one, you know, because... The best two back horses uh, have been Blackrod and Summergand. Blackrod is in one, Summergand is in three. And I've been telling everyone all week, back, back a high number, you have to back a high number. I don't know, I, th I think the two most likely winners pre-draw were Blackrod and Summergand, but can you keep with them from one and three? Blackrod's interesting because he was down to run in the July Cup, he was withdrawn on the day of the race. He was a big price for the July Cup, but connections were no fools, they know what they're doing. Um, and he's only rated 99, but so he was going to run in the July Cup, so you can say he's well handicapped. I don't know how you want to play this. Do you just honour the draw tradition, or do you just say, no, the draw is not going to be so significant with the 15? I don't know. I can tell you there has been money around for Embor, number 14, uh, with Safi Osborne book. That's 20 into 12 since the decks came out, and that one is in stall five. I don't know. I'm just going to honour the draw and go for Snash, a Tim Easterby sprinter. Um, this is his toughest task so far, but he's drawn in 14 and the Tim Eastery sprinters are flying along. But uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how the punters want to play this with the draw. Snash then for Pat Cooney. Love saying that name. Um, the temptation to play around with Black Rod's name is, is too much for me. <laughs> he, he debuts for Ed Bethel. When Ed saw the draw come out in Stall 1, he must have gone. He must have been so delighted to get this horse from Dave Armstrong. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm in yeah. Stall 1, I don't believe Yeah, it. I mean, Stall 1 would be, would, would be OK if there were 20 runners. But there's a lot further to go to get over to that far side now. Now, the thing about this race is not just a draw race, a pace race as well. Yeah. Eight of the last 11 winners made all against yeah. one or other rail. And the six of them did it on the, on the stand side. Um, 
the three who didn't, the three who came behind, turned out to be remarkably well handicapped horses. One of them was Baccarat, who won the Wokenham the following year. One of them was Outdo, who ended up the Stone High and won the Wokenham about two, three years later. Uh, um, and the other one was Don't Touch, who won the Air Gold Cup on his next start. So, Great knowledge, Gil. So what you're saying is we need a group horse in handicap. You need a really good... could be that. He, he could be that. But he is still favourite with what looks like a really bad draw. I mean, if you'd have tipped Black Rod I mean, today, if he goes that side, the sky would have turned purple. Exactly. If he goes that side, how many is he going to take with him? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. So I think, like Pat says, you have to, you have to honour the draw. But you, I think you want to honour the draw with something that's got a bit of pace. Now, you can certainly see the case for just another bottle again yes. because, because he is three from three and his, his other two wins came after the, the great St Wilfred. So, you know, and, and he was well on top last time of, of a horse called Emperor Spirit. Um, but I really like Emperor Spirit at a bigger price because he's drawn in 13, just another bottle's in 10. Uh, and the two on his inside don't really want to be leading. So he will, he'll get first shot at the rail, I think. And he's only been out the first two a couple of times in his life. He was like, drawn you know, terribly he keeps last on, time. Yeah, he was drawn terribly, right on the outside yeah. at Chelmsford. Actually ran all right. Right on the outside of Chel Chelmsford, and yeah. there was plenty of pace in the way, so he couldn't get in. Like, you know, so by the time they turned into the straight, he'd, he'd, he'd run far enough. Yeah. You know, so I, I rule that. I, I rule that out. And, you know, he obviously ran really well when second to just another, but he's only a pound better off for, you know, about half length or whatever. So, you know, it's not, you know, he, he's certainly no certainty to reverse the form, but, you know, he's going to get first shot at that well. So I do quite like him. But I've also, I'm, I'm sticking with my anti post selection as well. It was, it was Al Simo, oh. uh, yeah. the mayor, because she's a big price and she's got pay. She's in eight. I love which her. Which doesn't really help. She's, but she did win from five of, from still one of, uh, but it's only five, but she's still one from uh, further out on the track than, than is normally the case at Ripon uh, when she won here. And she won very easily that Course day. Course form at Ripon is huge, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah, but there are loads in there with it. Be, there are loads in there with it, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she just goes, she just goes really well. She's won seven of her last 12 starts. She's right? been and remarkable. And she just keeps on sense. improving. Her only defeat in her last three came when she was third to Galforce Mayor at York. Galforce Mayor has taken out another big it's race. It's a listed filly, isn't it? A big race, yeah, and been placed in, in, in group company as well. The yeah. runner-up, Crazy Luck, won, two, won the next two. Uh, so it's really strong form. Uh, I think, you know, because it's Steph Holland's head and it's not one of the big northern trainers, uh, with a record in the race that she's just a little bit bigger price than she should be. And the horse just keeps on winning. And she probably couldn't have a better jockey on than Jason Hart, of course. Yeah, no, no, one really success, good, really good. Stewards he'll, Cups, etc. He'll know how to get her out of the stalls early enough. It's, it just depends how near she can get to the rail from where she is uh, and how much she's got left in the locker. But she keeps, you know, she, keep, she runs a career best nearly every time she sets foot on a race course. I was getting ready to unleash my theory on this race. And do you know what? <laughs> you've, you, you've nicked it. I've got Emperor Spirit to beat Al Simo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh we better have the cast then, haven't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, dear Lord. So there you go, Pat. There's your trifecta. What will that pay, man? Well, yeah, we'll be reviewing your accounts if that were to come in. Yeah, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's just a, a, just a, a real hazard that race, isn't it? It'll be interesting to see how the punters go for. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Newmarket, shall we? Because it's the grey horse handicap, and we thought we had to do this. It's at three. Yeah, I had to look down. Yes, it's 3.18. Six furlong sprint. Some old favourites in here. Pat Cooney, again, looks like a bit of a muddled market to me. Yeah, I was a bit worried about this race because there's not that many horses running at the moment and even fewer greys. But uh, we've ended up with seven. We've kept the faith with Mr. Bluebird as our market leader. On the face, I thought he was a bit disappointing at Haydock last time out when fifth. But there was a 50 to one chance, a 28 to one second and so forth. So give it the benefit of the doubt. And what I will say about these handicaps, that Harry Davis claiming five is always a positive. And there's always money around for him when he does take these rides in races like this. We all know he's going to be uh, claiming none in a, in a few a few months' time for sure. So he's a popular order. Seven or four wouldn't float my boat on the back of that disappointing run. There's others to consider. Um, I like Vera Eagle of Ed Dunlop. This fella normally runs over seven furlongs. And, um, you know, on the face of it, has got a bit to do. But it has one over six. And I just think James Doyle and the first-time visor might light the horse up. So that would be a degree of value. Seven or four. 
that's hardly the bargain of the century, the favourite for me. Oh, I agree, Kills. He does look very skinny. There must be a reason why he's so far ahead, uh, uh, you know, 7-4 at the time of filming over Come On Girl, who looks like she's best at Lingfield, basically, or on the All Weather uh, for the Applebee. She's 4-1, to one, very eagle, 6-1. to one. Everything here's got something to prove. Yeah, of course they have, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, the favourite is a spinter, and there's a couple in there that might not be, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and go with one that isn't, and that's Lord Rapscallion. Oh, do you know what? I nearly went yes. for him. Now, he spends the vast majority of his life over seven furlong and has run over and and obviously has run over a mile. He's very well handicapped. He's ten pound lower to win fourth in the Buckingham Palace and third in the in the uh, uh, Bunbury Cup last yeah. year. Now he ran a stinker at Doncaster last time, finished ninth to fourteen. But that's the second time he's run terrible there, and he normally runs his race at Newmarket. Now it's a, it'll be a while since he's run at six furlongs, but he does have some pretty good back form, including when splitting Chill Chill and Great Ambassador off a mark of ninety two. Uh, last spring on the on the Rowley Mile course. Now, you know, that is good sprint form, whatever way you're looking at it, especially when you're looking at him running off a mark of 83 now. So I think, he, I think he's got a pretty decent chance if he can still handle the, the drop back to six. Do you know, we're looking very similarly at these races, Kills. I, I looked at the Fav, I looked at the second Fav, I looked at the third Fav, even Strike of the Hornbys and uh, Portman combination, I thought he's a bit more exposed. Uh, the Rapscallion was there. I thought revolutionised. You could have, uh, on some back class as well, made it for. But I've gone for Wel Wentworth Falls, who is definitely on a mark he ought to be winning. He's been hampering himself with slow starts. And he, he, he has been a bit hit and miss. He usually comes good in the time for the Portland, which is not too far away at Doncaster in September. And this smaller field under Franny Norton, there's been some money for him. I think Pat will tell us in a sec. And... If this smaller field will help him, if he's there two furlongs out, he'll be he'll be steaming at home. But it's a leap of faith. Uh, he's a finisher, isn't he? The amount of times I've seen Wentworth Ford get up to beat something I've backed, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, right? you know what I mean. He's usually, done it, when, it's usually when it's when we're not on. Bit, yeah. But I think he's coming good, and it's about that time, viewers, isn't it, where we start to see these sprinters? You know, we've seen it with Mr. Wag. You can only win within that kind of the month. Maybe this is the time for Wentworth back, and he has been backed, hasn't he? Yeah, there's money around for him, but it's it's sort of race, isn't it? Where I think they're all just concertina together from their current prices. You know, you, you look at Lord Rapscallion, and I looked at him as well. He was once rated 100, now he's 83. You, you can be against the front couple in the market, can't you? You look at Come On Girl, you can say, well, hang on, that's Michael Appleby, uh, Philly very much in form. Nought from 14 on the turf, though, that's got to put you off. I, I'd have no problem at all backing the three outsiders in the market at the moment. All right, OK, there we go. Now, let's look at one horse that has been very well back in the feature race. I think we can say that. The 335 always is on a Saturday, isn't it, in Newbury? It's the Hungerford Stakes. So it's really good horses win this over the years, Pat. And Tiber Flo is being given another chance for that red-hot Haggis team after his eighth place in the Commonwealth Cup. Yeah, and uh, no better currency, really, than to get with a William Haggis, Tom Marquand horse in, in a group race. And this fella has been well back since we put the prices out. On Monday, I think we were nine to two. That's been very, very popular. Quietly pleased to see there were 10 final decks in the race. Uh, there was only 12 at the five day stage. So good to get a good, strong field. Tiber Flow, it was okay, wasn't it, in the end? I thought it's Commonwealth Cup form. How good is he over seven? Not quite sure. He's won over seven, uh, but connections are stepping him up. He was not stopping over six. So I'm sure everything will be okay. And in terms of the draw, he's in stall one, but Pogo is in two, and Pogo is a front runner running ever so well. He's actually running career highs at the moment, but it looks quite a straightforward uh, riding task for Tom Marquand here. Pogo is going to lead, Tiberflow is going to follow it, and that's how the race is going to be run. Uh, others in the race to consider on the other side of the track, Happy Romance has been 12 to 1 and now gone 10 I would imagine that's bound to be a single-figure price. I, I don't think uh, uh, bookmakers are going to let a Holly Doyle horse go off at double-figure price on, on a race on the telly like that. So Happy Ramos has got some sort of a form book chance. They're all rated over 100. There's not much between the lot of them. But Tiber Flow is potentially the improver of the race, and the race will be set up for him through uh, Pogo, who will be hard to crack, of course. <sighs> I'm sighing kills because I'm agreeing with the Cooney. <laughs> when I saw him on the wing type of flow, I thought, hmm, might be able to take this one on. And then I looked into it. Williams won this twice in the last two years with very good three-year-olds. We spoke to him earlier in the year, didn't we? You could tell he quite liked this chap and he got the job done, didn't he, then? Then he went to the Commonwealth Cup and he was all right. It was it was st stunk of horse that was caught between six and seven furlongs, which is what we thought he might be. Um, yeah, but I mean, if, you, to him, it, if you're stuck it, between six and seven at Ascot, then you need seven, don't you, on another track? Like, you know, so it's going to be okay it, on that. But I think, the, 
I think we've got to a stage now where William Haggis is treated almost like a deity by bookmakers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. it's just consistently underpricing horses. And there's not a lot to dislike about Tiber Flow other than his price. I do not think on what he's done he deserves to be favourite. His official rating tells you tells you that anyway. Um, you know, and it's not like he's only had two starts and has got loads of improvement to come. He could still be improving, but he has more to do than those odds suggested, you know, and it is quite simple. Like, I can see him winning, wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, but would I back him at 3 to 1? Not in a million years. I right. just could not do so. Now, when you spoke about this at the very top in our intro, I could tell you were quite excited about this race. I haven't seen what you put up in the weekend or anything earlier at the start of the year. So I'm going to go through them, all right, and we'll see what Kills does like because there's some right <laughs> characters in here. Now, Pogo. Charlie Hills, in fairness to him, when he looked like he was right out of sorts, said we still haven't seen the best of him. Six-year-olds have won this race, and he's in the form of his life, isn't he? Will love, he make all? Love Pogo. He's as tough as old boots. He's as honest as they come. He keeps running career bests. I'm not sure you want to make the running at Nubia over seven furlongs, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and he's got a penalty. So it is hard. He is the highest rated horse in the race. We shouldn't take it away from him, but he has got a penalty as well. Yeah. So a little bit of a struggle for me. What about Chindit, who's got a legion of supporters Chindit. and he'll be looking at this saying, no buy today. Chindit does my head in. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, he, he really did, and he really did my head in when he won at Ascot. He I could be better over I wouldn't have him getting it. I wouldn't have him getting a mile. Yeah, he's got a chance. He might he might press Pogo as well, like, especially over seven, because he'd probably want to test at it. Will uh, you be bursting any bubbles with Chris Walls, Philly, double uh, or? No, I think, again, I think she's honest. and think in the best form, she's certainly got a shot. What um, about Happy Romance, and who Pat said... Got, got a bit. Yeah, who doesn't? He's the, no, she's the one. She's the one. Okay, we got she's the, the one. She's six. got the form. <laughs> she's got she's got good with, that's a good with form. Newbury form. She's won a super sprint there. She yeah. won a Hackwood there. She was beaten three lengths in the Hackwood last time uh, in, in, in a good running. Uh, a race that's worked out really, really well uh, with, with you know Minzel going close uh, in the. Um, in a Morris de Geese and, and Gobert's Go winning in Ireland. It's a really good piece of form. She did run out, she ran out of ground a, a little bit late and she had, she had plenty running left to do. Uh, looks like she's ready for another crack at seven furlongs. She seemed to stay up well enough when she went to Riyadh early on, early on in the season, but if she's gonna get seven furlongs properly, it'll be at Newby, it's nice, easy, nice, easy flat seven. She loves the track. Uh, she's got Holly up, covered up, bring her through for a run. Uh, I think she's a crack in each way. Bet. I don't know what she's doing at 10 to 1, Pat. <laughs> All right, Pat, she's 10 to 1. She's 10 to 1. Do you know what, Pat? I wasn't sure whether he was going to find his... You know what he's like uh, with Cliff Horses? He's given up on Wings of War. Might have to have a little saver on that. And Primo Baccio, one day she's going to click into place, one day, she? She, one day she's going to do it. I mean, it, it, you know, it's probably hard. It's probably hard there. If there's one that's overpriced on natural talent, although he can be a bit frustrating, is Run to Freedom. He's got an official rating of 110. So I just wonder whether him and Pogo might go and set it up. Well, it's, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. With Chindit in there, there might be a strong pace. Again, that, that I really like the. I think Happy Ramos is a better horse than Primo Baccio overall. Yeah. Like, you know, and, you know, as much as, as much as I do like Primo Baccio, I thought she should have done better at Goodwood last time. Yeah. I thought that was well, her race. She, it, her last run, her only run at Newbury was that eye-catching run, of course. Of course, in the Fred yes. Darling. So uh, uh, of course, in the we'll Fred see. Darling. Yes. Just, Again, I spoke to I mean, Walker and he still believes. It could he? be, you know, it could be flat track. <laughs> flat track is what she wants. I mean, yeah. that you know, when you say that eye-catching run, the other run she had was at York, yeah. where she absolutely flew home. So maybe. She's running under perfect conditions. So oh, that's you, a great day, wasn't You it? may be talking me into a savoury. Well, listen, we've covered <laughs> half the field and me and Pat have ended up on the fan. There you go, Tiber Flow gets two votes to Happy Romance in the feature race. Now, let's go to Sunday, Pat, because one of the treats of the summer season over there at Derville is, of course, the pre Jacques Lamawa. All nine go. Absolutely, and what a lineup it is. It's a, it's a grade one, a group one race, so we were hoping to get a stellar lineup. And we've certainly got that. We've got um, Corey Abbas, who's seven of four as we speak. In Spiral, nine to four. State of Rest, five to one. And Bigger Prices Bar. And it's just a tremendous race. That being said, you can pick holes in, in the front three, can't you? Corey Abbas, yes, the Guineas, form, uh, Guineas win was excellent. Struggled to win at Royal Ascot. And we all thought the fourth, Mal June, was the one for this race. Sadly, he, uh, he, he's a non runner. We were all wanted to be with him. The Royal Ascot version of Coriobus wouldn't be good enough for this one. In Spiral, the Royal Ascot version of her win would be good enough. Her defeat at Newmarket next time out wouldn't be. 
State of rest. Is he a miler? He's been winning over 10. Don't know. Is the trip too sharp for him? So you could make claims to say the first three in the market are all vulnerable. But what will beat them? I don't know. I think uh, an interesting runner is Erevan in the Aga Khan colours, three from three. But he only narrowly won a uh, a four-runner race last time out. So I don't know. I'm going to pin my hopes on the new market Guineas version of Coriabus. But I do think State of Rest is a very interesting horse dropping down in trip. Be interesting to see how they ride him. The Arca Khan's interesting. It makes me giggle <laughs> the name of that one because it should be Aeroplane, shouldn't it? We've got Aerovan in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there are some limitations on him. Um, <clears throat> this is a proper treat, isn't it? And I was talking to Andrea earlier about clashes. France have got one here, haven't they? Because if Caribus comes back, we've got a Guineas winner, St James's Palace winner. They were gutted they couldn't have a go at Baid, at the Sussex, if you believe the hype machine or not. They thought he would have gone close there, especially when they had the third in that race. Um, and yet here we've got Inspiral, who if you're believing the recent work, she's back to where she wants to be. And yet we've got the admirable state of rest who's going to take him along. Is it between those three? Or? Is he going to take him along? There's no what? way that's going to take him along. You don't think so? One in a million years. What's going to win? What's going to going to go as fast as Bath Rat Leon, is it? That's the one that's just going to ping on. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, Order of Australia likes to go forward. It could even get to the good lead shout. of Goodwood. That's, is that good enough? Uh, what, Bath Rat, like Order of Australia or Bath yeah. Rat Leon? No, either uh, of them. Uh, I think on Order of Australia's best form, it wouldn't be far off, but it just doesn't produce it that often. These we days. need some pace in this race because last Sunday was a disaster. There's an it? absolute certainty of pace in this race. You see, I mean, Bath Rat Leon stumbled coming out of the stores of Goodwood in the Sussex Stakes and was still two lengths ahead after 50 yards. <laughs> yes. like, you know what I mean? So, okay, you know, I there's, you know he will, you know, he's definitely going to lead and there are going to be others that are going to be on up with him it sets it up for both the front two in the betting uh, and you know the, the 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 French unexposed one literally you know don't know too much about but what I do know is if Inspiral hadn't have run in the foul mistake she'd be she'd be a warm favourite for this because she's getting weight off Caribbean. because she's getting because she's getting the weight she absolutely mm. destroyed them at Ascot where there were you know, four or five horses in a heap uh, in the colt race like, you know, and that just stinks of not very good. August is the month that the trainers don't like these weight allowances or sex allowances because they believe their horses are all peaking and they're starting to get bigger and yeah. all that sort and of stuff. Yeah, and what, you know, and what happened in Spiral? She bounced. She surely bounced. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, you know, uh, there will be proponents of the bounce theory who would, would be looking at you and saying, didn't you see that? No, I didn't mm. see it. But when you think about it afterwards... She was right, flat, yeah. wasn't she? She was just she was flat. eight on, wasn't she? She was just flat. She was seven, yeah, she was seven, eight on... Uh, and she got beat by the horse I backed to by, by the horse I backed to beat her at Ascot. Yeah, by the way, the voyage. Uh, but no, I never had a bet in the race. Didn't lay her. Didn't back anything else against her. Um, but I think you know, looking back on it, it was actually far more predictable than those odds would suggest. Um, there is a bounce theory out there if you're not familiar with it, um, and she qualified on quite a few other criteria. It's when they run a f- hard peak race first time back, isn't it? Yeah, you, know, you can bounce. If you've run a big race and you're coming out quickly, which she was, you can bounce if you run a big race uh, on your first run back from a big break and you're coming out quickly. She's done that. I get essential tipping here, by the way. Apparently, <laughs> oh, no, I, you know, I, 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 think, I think she'd be a much shorter price than she is if she hadn't run in the palm. Apparently females react uh, worse to big fig, to running big figures than, than Colts do as well. The way you're like, going, with that. Like, you know. So, um, but that that that's the bounce theory in, in in a nutshell. So she qualified on quite a few criteria, and I think that's what happened to her. And if she's back to her best, she's the best in the race. She's got straight track form, of course, hasn't she? As exactly. well, in the fully smile. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. with you as well on Inspiral. There you go. Then we got there in the end. Some absolute pearlers for you along the way. It's tricky. What are your naps? Ours are coming up next. Here we are then, as mentioned, wait no longer for the weekend naps. And uh, Pat, let's go to you in Stoke. Take the floor. Yes, uh, off to Ripon in the four o'clock, the top weight, bear with. Now, this one, there was a lot of money when this one ran last time out and was a very unlucky loser. Stumbled coming out the stalls, Safi Osborne rode it and just really was just never really looked like winning, but stayed on very strongly to the end. I marked it down as an unlucky loser. It's the same handicap mark this time around. And this is a horse. He ran, runs off 57. He has got good form over 69 not so long ago. So you could say he's got 12 pounds, um, you know, in hand in theory. Very unlucky last time out. It's a furlong and a bit further this time around. I think the set of circumstances is ideal for it. So despite the top weight, it's still a good handicapped horse. Bear with four o'clock ripping. There we go. 
Oh, thank you very much, Paul Keeley. Yeah, I like General Lee in the 120 at Newbury. Opens the card, opens the card at Newbury. I, we've got another short-priced William Haggis favour that I did just think is way, way too short. Um, ran three times in, in, in decent novice races, but up to one mile too far on for the first time. Finished a long last of four at Sandown. Trainer's representative said uh, it was down to the slow pace, which is a little bit weird given he made the running, he made the running on his first three starts and was held up. Uh, there and it was just it was just a terrible run and if you want to take two to one about a horse that's just done that not for me generally he's a year older he was really progressive on fast ground last season winning at Windsor and Goodwood uh, first run in the spring the ground was too soft second run I thought he ran a lot better than the bare result when he was 10th to a Giro at Goodwood because he looked like being a threat two furlongs out got bumped hung right and you know that was that was the end of him. I think he probably needed it. He also hung when he won easily there last year. So, mm. so it's probably not his course. I think flat track, fast ground. He's better. He's a lot better than than that than that Goodwood run. He's got a claim on it called Mohammed Tabti. Yeah, it's good. Who is decent? He takes off seven pound. He's had twenty one rides for the Coles this year. Um, four wins, four seconds, four thirds. Uh, bolted up on, a, on on one of theirs on Wednesday. Um, I think he's going to go well. He's about eight to one top price. I think that's I think that's very big. All right. Okay. All right. You could see the coals of the horses absolutely back in top form this year, isn't it? Drum roll then. What's Dave Orton napping? No, it's not Luxembourg. The car I said below on quality, but could we see the Ark winner coming out in the Royal Whip there? Must not miss race. Go to 7.20 at Wolverhampton. Yeah, you're going to have to stay up late for this treble. True Mason there for Declan Cowan Harrison Short. A sprinter in royal form. Drawn to, still chucked in in his old form, Carl Burke. He'll get you your Trixie. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for on this weekend's What a Shout. Uh, Kiel's great to have you back in. We'll be back on Tuesday, of course, looking at everything in York. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can't wait for that. You know, love the big festivals. This is the last big British summer festival, isn't it? Um, always loved York. It was the, uh, it was the one festival that, uh, that I first went to, and I went there for years, from the age of about 16 to Oh, age well, they do it brilliantly, 22, choose it a Thursday back yeah. then. It was, it, it was great fun. Um, never been my luckiest track. Well, don't go there. We could do but, a whole show about that. But always loved it. Yeah, absolutely. And we won't be worried if we're singing in the rain up there next week, Pat Cooney. No, absolutely. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And I have fond memories here. I backed further flight when he won the Ebor a lifetime ago. And uh, unlike Keels, it's always been a lucky track for me, some reason or other. But uh, So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, all the stars will be there. So it'll uh, be great fun. Don't miss that. Then Oshie Murphy comes back in. Another big preview. All the big races are York. That's on Tuesday. But so much action to come this weekend. For myself, Dave Orton, lovely to have you with us on this sizzling weekend. Do stay cool out there. Do gamble responsibly. Do download the free Must Have Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Loads of sport out there. Enjoy it.